Hello guys and welcome back! Today I want to show you how I built two of my old audio amplifiers. This old amplifier brings back some memories. I built it in 2002 with components from late 90s. I was a kid back then so don't criticize too much. This is not the first amplifier I built, but it is the oldest one I have that is still functional. The case is made out of 4mm plywood. My grandfather was a carpenter, so for me as a child that period was the wooden age. Or the plywood age. The top panel is held in position with four black wood screws. Behold the technology! The fan has a 3-pin connector, so I can remove it easily. So, this amplifier is powered by a big transformer with a lot of outputs. This is the main output, it's for the amplifier board. It's a center tap output. And you can see I started with a thick copper wire for the first half, but I didn't have enough wire for the second half, and I replaced it with two thinner wires. Next, we have a 10 amps bridge rectifier and two very big capacitors. These are 15,000 microfarads capacitors, but because they are very old, they are also very big. The capacitors are fixed to the bottom panel with copper wire, because here in Romania we fix everything with metal wires. The transformer has three more outputs. They go to this board with bridge rectifiers and smoothing capacitors and they power this audio equalizer with five frequencies, this preamplifier, which is actually just a small amplifier board, and these two LED vometers. These four buttons are from a very old radio. I've just added a small piece of plywood in front to be able to push them. This one is for power, obviously. This one increases the cooling fan speed and also lights up the LEDs. This one increases the audio input level, which in this position the audio level is decreased by these resistors. And this one has no use. The preamplifier board and audio equalizer are fixed in vertical position with aluminum brackets. The available space is limited and most of it is taken by these giant capacitors. But the most impressive innovation at the time was to mount an LED into the volume knob. How do I connect the wires without breaking them? I cut a round hole for the volume knob, but the potentiometer is fixed to another piece of plywood which I cut into this shape. Now there is enough space for the LED wires to move. I made a few loops on the wires so they will not break when bended. The wires are also glued to the circuit board with silicon adhesive to attenuate the movement. This way the contact point will be flexible. This simple design worked so far with no problems. The audio input comes from two pairs of RCA connectors. Two pairs because initially it had two inputs, but now there is only one. A shielded twin pair cable is mounted as far as possible from the transformer and will carry the audio signal to these resistors. I call this the gain button. The resistors will decrease the overall audio level, including the background noise, to around 60% because when you listen at a low volume, you don't want to hear that noise. So you can turn off the gain button, increase the audio signal from your laptop or cassette player, and you will have a better sound to noise ratio. Next, the audio signal goes to the equalizer board. I extended the wires and mounted the potentiometers on the front panel. Then we have the low power amplifier for the first stage. I got this board from some old desktop speakers. This preamplifier is needed because the equalizer board works with an audio signal of maximum 500 millivolts, but the final amplifier needs a signal of 1.3 volts. There is a volume potentiometer for the preamplifier board, also for a better sound to noise ratio. Then we have the master volume potentiometer, which brings the processed audio signal to the final stage of amplification. The powerful output signal comes out from the two pairs of speaker connectors. I still have the original data sheets of the modules I bought for this amplifier. And I also have the original data sheets of my first amplifier boards I bought when I was a child. Does this make me 11.1 hoarder? The amplifier boards use the TDA7294 integrated circuit, which gets very hot when you turn up the sound. So I mounted the PC cooling fan on the top panel. Originally it had 4 red LEDs, but I replaced 2 of them with blue LEDs because in my 15 years old mind it looked better. 
The air is forced into the amplifier heatsink, then it goes left and right, cools down the transformer and other components, and exits through these venting holes. The problem is that it makes a lot of noise because the whole panel is vibrating. That's why I added a button to decrease the fan speed. At low audio volume, it doesn't need a lot of cooling. These thin holes are not made with a power saw. They are made with this hand tool. It took me a whole day to make them. Yes, I know, but back then I didn't have a girlfriend. If we look underneath the bottom panel, we see that instead of rubber pads, I cut some pieces from an old mouse pad. Back then I didn't have access to online shopping, so I was forced to improvise with what I could find around the house. The transformer sticks out a bit because I wanted the amplifier case to be as thin as possible. This way I saved one centimeter in height. In 2006 the amplifier received an update. I rewound the transformer and used thicker copper wire for the amplifier output. I replaced the original 10,000 microfarads capacitors with bigger ones. I needed more space for these giant capacitors, so I repositioned the modules vertically. And I added the LED vometers. There were two audio inputs and this button was switching between them. That meant another stereo cable from the RCA connectors. But I gave it up because I don't have a shielded transformer. This hog of a transformer induces a lot of 50 Hz noise in all the components around it, especially in audio cables. So I just removed the secondary audio input and repositioned the rest of the wires as far as possible from the transformer. And with all these modifications, I can say that the background noise is... still present. That's inevitable with these old components. But when you want to party, just turn everything up. You won't hear the noise anymore. In the back we have the input and output connectors, which are doubled for redundancy and to connect more speakers if needed. The mains connector is salvaged from an old broken radio. Let's see if it still works. The LED vometers are connected to the pre-amplifier output. This way you can adjust the sound and watch the LED bars independently from the master volume. I built a lot of speakers so far. These are the most powerful ones. My cat helped me with these speakers also. The base speaker driver has 8 ohms and a peak power of 350 watts. The speaker enclosure is made from 18 mm laminated chipboard. For high frequency I didn't have a powerful tweeter, so I used two smaller ones instead, each with a more powerful filter. All the speaker drivers have an impedance of 8 ohms. The only problem is that the speaker enclosure should be bigger according to the bass drivers. Let's move forward in time. It's the year 2009, the plexiglass age. This amplifier is simpler and smaller, but it looks much better. It's simpler because it has only two switches, one to power it on and the other to increase the fan speed when needed. This enclosure doesn't have any screws. The top panel is held in position with tiny strong neodymium magnets. The rest of the panels are glued together with a special plexiglass adhesive. Inside we have the same technology but in a smaller and crowded package. There is a smaller transformer with a center tap output for the amplifier boards a 6 amps bridge rectifier and a pair of 10,000 microfarads capacitors, which were initially installed in my other amplifier. Then we have the same TDA7294 amplifier boards. There is also a secondary 12 volts output which powers a stereo tone connector, the cooling fan and some LEDs. This was initially a 24 volt center tapped transformer, but I rewound it. 
It has less power than my other amplifier, but with 6 ohm speakers it's still very loud. I have a friend who worked for a plexiglass company. I told him I need a few pieces, so he stole them for me. I mean, bought them for me. I almost gave it away there. The audio input also has some resistors to decrease the audio level for a better sound to noise ratio. They are connected through a switch under the RCA connectors. I wanted this amplifier to be quieter, so I used a newer and thinner fan. To remove the vibrations, the fan is glued with a rubber gasket on the top panel. I also designed the protective grill in a round shape, so the air will create less noise when it passes through. And with all these modifications, it's still very loud. Well, it was worth a try. Back then I used mechanical switches to change the fan speed, but nowadays I could just use a simple thermal switch to automatically increase the fan speed when the TDAs get hot. Fitting the top panel back is easy, the tiny magnets will do the entire job. I used these amplifiers for more than 10 years, but now I have this Yamaha RX V730 receiver. I bought it a few years ago and I really like it, even though it's not the latest model. It's very powerful and it has a lot of features. Check out the remote control. But my favorite feature is this. The remote control works even backwards. This is very useful when you're drunk. I mean tired. So these are my old homemade amplifiers. If you enjoyed this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. In the meantime my long awaited components have arrived. So I will start working on my next videos. Bye!